I think we have an opportunity, like we did in 2010, to beat them on the ground. It's my pleasure today at Human Events uh, to welcome a good friend of mine, Tim Phillips, President of Americans for Prosperity. Great Thanks to be here. Thanks for coming by, Tim. You bet. Uh, you know, th there's there's truly a lot to to discuss with you know the the upcoming presidential election, but also um, you know on the grassroots level, and that's mm. AFPs. That's their that's, that's right. the go to. So if you could talk just a little bit about AFP's role, primarily first in the presidential election. Um, but also, what are you guys doing in 2012 on the grassroots level to get the vote out for strong, conservative, fiscally conservative candidates? For years, our side would put up our TV ads and our radio ads, and the left would put up their TV ads and radio ads. And some years ours were better, some years theirs were better. But they always had an advantage on the ground. You know, they always had the government employee unions, they had the radical environmental groups, they had all the other local organizations. And sadly, they had real money and real troops. And our side really couldn't match that. And it's exciting now uh, to see a, a broad Tea Party movement, a broad free market movement. There are other coalitional partners on the issues as well, whether it's Second Amendment or social issues. Uh, and I think we have an opportunity, like we did in 2010, to beat them on the ground. And so that's what we're working to do at Americans for Prosperity. We've put together a field operation in uh, a number of states around the country, priority states. Uh, I think you know what those are as well as I do, I'm Absolutely. sure, whether it's Florida, Ohio, or Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania et cetera, sure. where we want to make sure uh, that we have enough staff on the ground to actually help the literally hundreds of thousands of activists out there uh, who want to make a difference. And so we are, are, are putting together a field effort. Uh, it's going to have uh, people in priority counties in these key states around the country. I think about my home state of Virginia. Mm -hmm. I live in Loudoun County, uh, a county that uh, in 2008, literally within 10 minutes of my home, had Obama, Palin, McCain, and Biden all do multiple events. Uh, in a county like that, we want to make sure we have the resources on the ground to reach out, train, mobilize, uh, and actually put into the, the, the operation the thousands of activists just in that county who care, who are very passionate about the issues. Uh, and so we're going to be running a door-to-door -door effort, a phone bank effort, a social media imprint effort in counties like that using uh, the grassroots uh, troops and the field program that we, we're building at AFP. And it'll be in, in conjunction with Tea Party allies and sure. broad broad movement allies. And, and you mentioned Tea Party and, and certainly a, a, a driving force in 2010. You know, mm -hmm. it's sort of, you know, it, on the sidelines right now in the ether, that vote is still important for Republicans right. to, to gain. But if we could go through every single candidate, the four that are remain in the GOP field, if you could tell me what each one of them needs to to get that Tea Party vote, to push them across the, the goal line with those folks, and ultimately to a nomination? That's a great question. I, I look at this crop of candidates, and we were just talking about the 1980 election before mm -hmm. we came on camera, and, and that brilliant book by Craig Shirley, uh, uh, and, and I was a young man in 80, and I assumed, looking back, that everyone was for Reagan, that he was seen then as the perfect candidate, and everyone fell in line behind him. In fact, that's not how it happened at all. As Craig Shirley's book points out, uh, the movement was split. Some were for Conley, some were for uh, other candidates out there, and it was a pretty split up effort back then. So there's no perfect candidate, starting with that supposition, which is safe. I think if you look at uh, the four candidates, starting with, with Romney, I think if Governor Romney uh, can, can show that the passion uh, that defends his work in the private sector. You know, he has a very honorable background in the private sector creating jobs uh, at Bain Capital and other endeavors, that's a wonderful thing. And I, I hope and would urge him to become just more comfortable talking about that in bold terms uh, because there is a passionate side to economic freedom. You know, we've got a system of, of, in our, that we favor that's pulled more people out of the muck and mire of dis despair and poverty than any other system in the history of the world. That's something to be passionate and excited about as opposed to being defensive about it. That, that would be my advice for us worth to him. I think what Senator Santorum uh, would be to genuinely spell out an economic agenda and to make sure that's a broad-based economic agenda that doesn't resort to populism, which frankly is a shop-worn philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, but that genuinely brings broad-based economic freedom. Uh, with Ron Paul, <laughs> I mean, he I, honestly, his ideas on cutting spending, erasing government agencies, that, those are wonderful things. And I, I think sometimes he goes for the bombastic statement when if he just laid out what he wants to cut in government, the trillion in the first year, if he would just lay that out without some of the bombastic rhetoric, I mean, I like rhetoric, don't get me wrong, but 
he's got, I mean, getting rid of energy and commerce and, and, and the departments, excuse me, and getting rid of the education department and, and, and moving the, the, the parts of those agencies like the nuclear agency into a, rolling that over. I mean, those are great things. If he were maybe just a little bit less bombastic, frankly, about it. Uh, and then Newt Gingrich, honestly, he needs to stop attacking capitalism. Mm -hmm. I, I think that one of the most misguided efforts in the entire year and perhaps of any year in recent years was Newt Gingrich attacking Mitt Romney, not on some policy position, which you can have good solid debates and arguments there about the shortcomings of the various candidates, but for goodness sakes, we've got enough people on the left attacking uh, economic freedom and private sector job creation and growth. We don't need uh, folks who, you know, call themselves conservatives, and I'll take them at their word for that. Uh, do I, that, was, that would be my best advice to him.